And a very good morning to you, Lagos, and welcome to Freshly Pressed 981. It's a part of Smooth Breakfast with Kaede, Ayo, and myself, Valentine. And this morning, we're joined by a wonderful gentleman in the studio. It's a, a studio filled with men and one lady. So we have, uh, who do I start with now? Ungo Dre, good morning. Welcome to Freshly Pressed this morning. Hey, Valentine, good morning. Good morning to you. And then Waji, Waji is at the corporate MC on the socials. Good morning, Waji. Good morning, Valentine, and good morning, Lego. And good to have you, Tunde Okufi, in the studio. He's at Big Coves on all socials. Morning, Lagos. Good morning. And Lagos, join the conversation by sending us messages through WhatsApp. You can send it to the number. 0839-444-0981. That is for WhatsApp. And if you want to tweet at us at smooth981fm, use that hashtag. Use the hashtag, hashtag freshly press 981. My Yoruba is just joking. That's <laughs> fine. <laughs> freshly press 981. And today for a Feel Good Friday, we start with this first story from The Guardian. The Guardian has it. Well, it was one that was really popular yesterday. We spoke about this on um, Lagos Talks 981 as well. I have fault is a Kisili's withdrawal from presidential race. So just an update on that particular story. The Independent National Electoral Commission, INEC, has halted the withdrawal of the Allied Congress Party of Nigeria's presidential candidate, Dr. Obiageli Ezekwesili, from the race based on constitutional provisions. Constitutional provisions, Wachi. Well, it's a big story, yeah. I mean, it is what it is. You know, you have a particular deadline with regards to when you should withdraw your candidacy for that position, and you did not. So your name will remain in the ballot, and whatever votes are you know casted towards you will be published and publicized. So it's really up to you whether you choose to continue campaigning or you choose to continue looking for individuals to vote for, and that's a completely separate issue with regards to what the law states. So I think are completely correct but within the boundaries of the law to indicate very clearly that you cannot withdraw your candidacy at this point. Whatever you choose to do is entirely up to you. Yeah. Now, when we talked on the story yesterday, it was breaking news, so we didn't mm -hmm. have enough details, or, or we didn't have details as such, and reactions. And right. of course, throughout yesterday, there were reactions you know, to this story. One of which is the question as to, didn't she, wasn't she aware of the provisions of the Electoral Act with regards to how long she needed to have given notice to withdraw from the election, electoral race? Oh. Yeah, I mean, we could speculate as to whether or not she knows, but it speaks to a larger problem with regards to what your intention is. Mm -hmm. um, you know, the, the job of presidency is probably anybody that goes for that position, you are looking for most likely the highest level of work you will ever attain in your life. Mm -hmm. So there's a certain level of dedication and a certain level of nuance with regards to your psychology before you actually go to now get that particular position. And this now speaks to a larger issue that the other individuals who are running for, for a president, aside from the two main um, political individuals, have to understand the sheer amount of work that goes into it, which for me speaks to a larger problem regarding your attitude and a self aggrandizing perspective about your messiah complex. Mm. Because if indeed you have the right intention to serve, you should, in my opinion, form some kind of mega party and begin to address the down ballot positions, your House of Representatives, your Senator positions, your House of Assembly, your LG, and then begin to make an actual dent with regards to efficacy of public service work before you can now actually begin to attain the position of presidency if indeed your intention is to effect change. So come and be, to think that you can put together a political movement within a short span of time without doing the proper work is a bit arrogant, in right. my opinion, and I think that's kind of speaking to what happened. Yeah, uh, well, let me just chime in here, not to add to, not to sound too harsh. I think that uh, it, it's pretty, um, um, uh, I don't know if you can use the word insulting in memory that, you know, people um, that a lot of us, you know, have serious respect for, um, exactly. decide you want to run for office, yeah. you know, and then, you, you know, you, you, your brows and notions get a lot behind you, yeah. and then just when the momentum is probably just coming in, they just decide to stop. So the question is like, what, what are, yeah, what did you think for? Like, mm -hmm. well, didn't you have this plan now? I mean, did you think this was just going to be one race that you come out and win easily? I mean, did you not methodically sit down and say, look, how are we going to win? Or, or why didn't you just go for something lower? Did Thank you. Well, she said it was for country. So, I mean, it, mm -hmm. it's for who? I, I think like, country. Because what she does is, is not that, the only country. Exactly. Exactly. Now the people, she was, you know, the people who wanted a coalition following the debate and she was listening to the voices. Okay. Right. That's the thing, this is not a democracy. You're, 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 you're contesting for a presidential candidacy of a country. 
two hundred million people. It's yeah. not. Uh, it's yeah. not a uh, because it's not. And there are ways. Serious business. All right. Now we ways. could go on and on about yeah, this. Yeah, but let me just stuff. quickly conclude because there are okay. ways that you do this. And go. Thank you so much for that analysis because you, when you whip up the sentiments of individuals, then you have to see it to the end. At least lose with some dignity and then concede that you've lost. So that way you can begin to build something for the future, even if it didn't work out this time. But if you now want to come back and say you're doing it for country, who's going to believe you? Mm. Your credibility and your legitimacy is somewhat shot with the actions in which you take when you handle this because you, frankly speaking, did not understand what you were getting into. I'm sorry, that's just it. All right, okay, thank you very much, Maji. We will move over from that to another big story this week, and it's an update on that one. Reps passed new minimum wage bill for second reading. Now, this story is from the Premium Times. Members of the House of Representatives yesterday passed a new national minimum wage bill for a second reading. The bill passed the first and second readings at the Senate hours after Mr. Buhari sent the draft legislation to the lawmakers. The executive bill initiated, initiated by the executive arm was presented by the deputy majority leader Idris Wafi. Yeah, so um, one step towards uh, reality. Um, the current government already um, announced 27,000 dollars minimum wage. So, of course, um, this has to go through the legal process. Um, National Assembly has passed it into law. Uh, so, we've had one step in the House of Reps. Uh, um, you know, we'll be busy going through second reading. So, after third reading, then uh, it goes straight to the Senate. Now, uh, there's a pushback, of course. Um, Labour wants 30,000 uh, naira, mm. uh, not 27,000 yep. We Some of us still don't know how the government is going to afford 27,000 naira, by the way. Uh, I think it was last Wednesday or so that they set up a committee headed by um, Ms. Makarani to find out how the government would actually afford or how the government would actually pay for the 27,000 minimum wage. And what is pretty really clear for some of us, if you look at this from the point of view of how much revenue the government has, it, it's going to be difficult to implement minimum wage without um, probably reducing the retirement age uh, in civil service or having some people <coughs> let go of some or reduce the workforce. Because that's quite a lot. I mean, uh, um, we all know what the current expenditure is like in Nigeria. And government currently um, still, in terms of debt revenues, is debt service to revenue. Government debt service revenue is between 40 50 percent. So it's obvious that this is one one bill that, even if they pass, um, the next government that comes in will find it very difficult to pay. If it's not the same government, that if it's, exactly, whatever, if it's the same government or other government, they're going to find it difficult to pay. State yeah. governments as, as well are going to find this difficult to pay. Where are they going to get the money to pay this job? Not to talk about the private sector. It's good to raise minimum wage, uh, but what is clear is that look, if you want to raise minimum wage, then you got to be sure that you have the cash to pay for it, mm -hmm. uh, not just in your raising it. By the way, the biggest problem with minimum wage as well is not just in raising it. Yeah. What people also found out is that when you get to the higher level, mm -hmm. it actually gets higher. So yes. yeah, yeah. So the so-called minimum wage, I don't know why we call it minimum wage. Well, that's it's 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 a salary increase. Level one. Yeah, let's, so when you get to all those levels, five, six, seven, it eight, increases. nine, it increases. It increases. So yeah. those are the guys that actually get the benefit of it. So when, when so, people say that minimum wage, increasing the minimum, minimum wage because they cannot afford it is not the answer. So then what's the alternative? Because at the end of the day, people say that 18,000 naira won't get you anywhere. Yeah. And we're still saying that we cannot fund this so, proposed bill. I agree. So Just like any business, productivity. So you got to be able to increase your, your, your revenue, revenue base story, right yeah, yeah re increase the revenue base or cut down expenses it's mm -hmm. just how it is everywhere and you can't change these things these are like unwritten laws of nature mm -hmm. so you can't say you just want to increase wages mm -hmm. without increasing revenue or cutting down some kind of cost so something let, let me just jump into and that sheds the spotlights on the governors as well exactly my dad said that everything you do in life is a function of your expenses not actually how much money you make mm -hmm. end of story so right. you always should look at your life from what your expense profile is as and then that will now determine Everything else. As a key That's financial easy. advice for every, everybody to, you know, put on the commit to mind. Now we have this message in from uh, Souls on Wiseman11 on Twitter. He says, "I suspect she realized late in the day that her party was actually working against her. That's why she had to step down." I was suspicious of our vice presidential candidate after listening to him yeah, at the debate way. in December. Mm -hmm. Now my concerns are justified. Uh, Simon Alina sent in this one on Twitter as well. He says. If her withdrawal is late, according to INEC, based on electoral law, she can campaign and ask her supporters to vote for a candidate of her choice rather than uh, rather they vote for her. Something similar had happened uh, before, uh, recently during Obasanjo's second term. Now we'll go to this other message on WhatsApp. David here sends in this message. 
Something just doesn't seem kosher about Madam Obi's decision to drop out of the race. Not saying much, but there's more to this, this than meets the eye. And that's from David. Uh, thank you very much, David. Ike here says, why are you people sounding like someone died because Auntie Obi is still yeah, from the race? Yeah, people are heartbroken. There are many people who... Yeah, oh, it continues. You know. It says, how many would have voted for her? Enough of the duplicitous behavior, I beg. Please, mm -hmm. you can't. And then Ian says, uh, well... We can afford minimum wage if the senators and House of Man Reps members give their outrageous salaries and allowances slashed. If they have that, that's slashed. End of story. Nobody should annoy me with all this bogus economic uh, analysis that say we can't afford minimum wage when the truth is staring us in the face. <laughs> all right. Sure. Let's move on to Vanguard now for this story. 2019 elections, United States, United Kingdom to deny visas to families perpetrators of violence. YG, they say they're not supporting any particular individual, but they're standing their ground to say, well, any individual who interferes in the democratic process or instigates violence against the civilian population before, during or after the elections will be denied visas. That's the way forward. <sighs> yes, the jolly old colonialists just mm. can't help but telling us African natives what to do. To <laughs> That's mm. frankly speaking what this is, is that you will toe the line according to what we say mm. or this will be the repercussions and consequences. Mm -hmm. That's what pretty much the tone of that is, is pretty much trying to exert whatever power you have because you know, like Cheta was saying downstairs, that Nigerians have created a particular framework for thinking with regards to wanting to escape at the points that we choose by going abroad. Mm -hmm. So they are holding on to that particular concept that we have developed as a nation, using it against us to now more or less dictate how we behave in election. Fine. I appreciate the ethos of it that you should not be violent under any circumstances, that you should try or run a free and fair election. That is perfectly normal and there's nothing wrong with that. But when you now begin to come with this further tone that is disinstructive, it's a little bit insulting. Okay, mm -hmm. allow us to go through our process. I think we can have an understanding of what we need to do. Mm -hmm. I don't believe that it is your place to come in with your little ruler and telling us that you better behave or you're going to get six strokes. Mm -hmm. I'm not down for it. But that Sorry. seems to be the most attractive thing for a lot of Nigerian politicians yeah. because they yeah. seem to be solace yeah. in, in the knowledge that they can escape at I, any time, I get at any it. Because it. I, it, during the elections, we understand that some of them actually foment yeah. trouble or cause violence. Sure, 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 or sure, sure. And then they bounce. And, and yeah. me, look, yeah. MC Uluomo. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Come on. You know, so... But they say they're citizens. Yeah. yeah, that's the issue now. Yeah. That's the issue. <laughs> uh, fomenting trouble here and doing stuff elsewhere. And I'm not saying anything. But um, look, the truth is, it's our fault. It is. Right? We treat visas abroad like it's the... It's a golden ticket. Gold it's a golden ticket. ticket. To Charlie's to chocolate heaven. factory. Yeah. Oh, oh, no, heaven. Not even, honestly. No, yeah. 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 You know, literally, that's the issue. So it's, it's what you prize that mm. they will withhold and deny you and say, you know, stand in line and mm. behave yourself. No, no, I'm, I'm, I agree with you. I'm, you know, sorry, Wakanda forever. So I, just, yeah, I, I, mean, I mean, it's rude. I mean, it's rude. It's, it's rude, rude but we permitted it. Yeah. It, it, but also in international relations, when you have challenges, um, you know, organizing your state as mm. well, you can yeah, ask for international yeah, help. And sometimes they come as international observers. Who's asking or they for do, this help? Well, we didn't ask, but we we, we are asking uh, over, um, covertly. Perfectly. So we're not okay. overt about mm -hmm. it, but we need help. Do you, know what, do, you know what I, do you know what I prefer? I prefer instead of them focusing on visas, because like, this really dumbs down the issue. We say, look, guys, if you perpetrate violence, you're not free from prosecution. Where globally, people, exactly, right? Within our country, yeah. yeah. Right. So make it a, you know, an international issue and send right. Interpol after you. Thank okay. you. All right, thank you. Now another one, still talking election matters. Court returns Duke as SDP presidential candidate. Ugo, now according to reports, Duke had emerged the winner of the SDP presidential primary held on October 6, 2018 where he secured 812 votes to Ghana 611, but this was contested. Well, the Court of Appeal in Abuja yesterday returned former Cross River State Governor Donald Duke as the presidential candidate of the Social Democratic Party. So? Yeah, um, so last year, uh, I, I can remember I, I said on Twitter, I was like, uh, well, you guys, you know, what is the most claiming that you don't have? Experience people running for office. Mm -hmm. Hey, here's this guy. Mm -hmm. He's out. At least he's gotten the ticket for, for the SDP. And it looked kind of like sounded like a you know, solid party at, at that time. And then um, all of a sudden, <laughs> party, just party promises. The typical Nigeria factor just came in, and then he was yanked off. So now he's back on. I don't know how much of a force that he still is. I, I doubt that. I think that he's, he's in the phone mm -hmm. currently. Nobody. In fact, he wasn't invited. 
uh, neither was Ghana elected. So he's, he's not even considered a front runner. Uh, you're not, you know, in this election matter, it's either you're popular on the streets or you're popular with area boys or you're popular on social media, mm. right? So that's basically where these things happen. So if you're nowhere there, yeah. then. Well, arguably, uh, most people believe that he's a stronger force than these other three candidates that appeared in the debates themselves. Perhaps he is, and that's what I'm saying because of the kind of experience that he had. I yeah. mean, he's been governor for eight years, and he's been he's been there, and people have muted about him. And at some point in time, people thought that he was going to be the one, the one to run for the back yeah. then, and that's yeah. what we expected. So, and and but then you see, this is part of what we see. Like a lot of these politicians, I don't know what happens. Uh, it's a seed after this election cycle, they just go incognito. Mm-hmm. You don't see them, and then when once it's been a few months to election, mm-hmm. they show up, and you know, and then they start so, to make noise. If you would expect you? someone like Donald Duke, if you if you had presidential ambitions since two thousand and seven or eight, mm-hmm. right, you should be in the national discourse mm-hmm. all through the Jonathan years. Whenever heard from you, yeah. you should be more vocal. You should have your own party. You start to build coalitions, and even during this uh, Buhari era, you didn't say much. Yeah. Were ahead of you, so now all of a sudden you're out and you want to contest. And uh, Nigeria, things don't move like that. Politics is not like this. Not mm-hmm. that way. Mm-hmm. So uh, well, now that he's back, I guess that uh, I get uh, you know, like someone said downstairs, they probably share the largest of, of uh, party mm-hmm. and Nigerian donations for party. So what's going to happen. Big question: Should he go this. ahead with his campaign? Do you think he has a fighting chance, or should he just form a coalition? You know what's probably going to happen it, when you say just form a coalition? He's just probably going to just team up with either the Atiku camp or the Buhari camp. That's mm-hmm. what you're going to see here, and then hope that if Ida wins, they probably give him a political appointment. And that's it. And that, that's how I see this I think, point. I, look, just just like Madam Obi putting out there, I think you should run for the, to, just for the sake of running because others will come and stand on your shoulders. That's the way it works. Let people just start breathe faster and sit down. That's Let people important. start to believe that it can be done. All right, we have a message here on Twitter from Sinus, uh, Samuel Linus. He says, a Duke has been determined on his presidential bid for a whim. Uh, I wish he's part of the coalition if it does materialize. Well, we'll watch for that. Watch out for that. Ayumi Day sent in this one. It says, this is very sad. It's a very sad thing for Africans and Nigerians in particular. This is some sort of colonialism staring at our face. I think he's referring to the visa issue. Uh, so but, I really, but I really do not blame <laughs> them. If you do not put yourself in a place of respect, you definitely be disrespected. I will send in a message. It says, I've always been a huge fan of this secrecy, and the news of her dropping out of the race did something to my emotions. I'm waiting for a full statement from her. I'm hoping that she takes time to... Uh, strategize towards 2023. She needs a full statement. And then she yes, she adds a question. Awele says, uh, when will we have a strong leadership that can do what needs to be done with the civil service workforce? We need to slash the civil service by 50%. It's the only way the minimum wage can be paid with some relative ease. However, many things need to be done ahead of such decisions. The government needs to work. The states need to work. Right now, we're in a full mess. All right, let's go on to this next story. Premium Times newspaper has this one. Our Premium Times publications have this one. Representatives to probe Kachiku over alleged irregularities in Lee's renewal. So they sat yesterday, that's the House of Representatives, and said they will investigate Minister of State and Petroleum Resources over alleged irregularities on the ongoing oil and gas lease renewal. To me, what are your thoughts on this? Look, um, my thoughts are very simple. The reason why we are here um, is the, um, the opacity or, the, or how opaque you know, our oil ministry is or the dealings of um, the NNPC, PPR, mm. and all the other um, you know, regulatory bodies that manage this. Yes. Um, so the committee that has oversight um, over our petroleum matters uh, don't have enough information when they say they, ha- they have information or it's alleged uh, that there are irregul- irregularities. That, mm. And what are the specific irregularities? They say that these oil companies that um, Kachiku has approved and uh, DPI have approved the renewal of their licenses for mm. all royalties to federal government. Mm. Right? Now, ideally, that shouldn't be difficult to verify if there was information, right? Um, and, and that's clearly a problem because further down the, the, the further down the story, um, Adamo, who oversees the committee, argues that um, the DPR deliberately refused to provide the committee on petroleum resources, relevant information and data, you know, to do this. So, mm-hmm. I mean, they are doing their jobs, they're asking questions, mm-hmm. um, but can we start to make that whole function a lot more transparent? Yes. And there are a bunch of things that are holding this up. I mean, there's the petroleum industry, uh, the PID bill, there's another, yes. there's another letter in it now, it's PIGB bill. Uh-huh. Um, you know, and we don't know whether it is. A bunch of things are supposed to, you know, 
bring the illumination mm. to that whole sector that hasn't happened and that, that's why we are where we are and it, it potentially because it is costing us money because according to their the committee's estimates that the, the federal government will be losing as much as 10 billion dollars as a result of um, the non-payment payment of, uh, of royalties and the, uh, the granting of illegal in their words illegal discounts yes. again so again if the, if the processes and procedures for offering discounts to people for um for, for the licenses was clear then it would be transparent to everyone so back to the issue of transparency here and now from this day we have this story nerc that's the nigerian electricity regulatory commission nerc has commenced the implementation of a new law that will eff eff efficiently regulate the deployment of foreign equipment workforce and other services in nigeria without allowing them to dominate operations in Nigeria's electricity market. Uh, the uh, Minister for uh, the you know the power sector, really, uh, Fashola, who's been very vocal about the regulations and the measures that they're taking to uh, you know check the excesses, he spoke about this. Also, uh, the NERC chairman, Professor James Momo, lends his voice to this, saying that, well, as part of the measures, also 40% of meters uh, will be sourced locally. How feasible is this? Well, um, okay, so there are, you can actually source. I, I don't think you can source uh, meters locally in terms of you know collectively. So we have meter manufacturers in Nigeria as well. However, a lot of these guys have um, some kind of technical partnership with, mm. with um, either their European counterparts or their Chinese counterparts. Mm. So when you say you want to stop um, you know foreign uh, dominance in the power sector, it's, it's a lot. Seems like it's um, um, it's a hard sell. Um, I mean, what do we manufacture here? Do we manufacture transformers? Uh, I guess the only thing that we probably do here and to an extent very well are cables, right? So, but a lot of the major equipments that you need for power, if you bring in the power transformers or even you know, grid equipments, you source them abroad. And technologically, these things have actually advanced so much. So um, even if it's solar, solar related power equipment, you get them abroad. So even if you can do them here, you probably can't even mass produce them here. And, and you need to mass produce these things for you to be competitive price wise. Yeah. So I think the government just needs to take a, take a, a, you know, a chill pill. Um, trust me, it's possible to um, forge coalitions. I think this is what <laughs> for, for some kind of partnership, technical partnership between local manufacturers here mm. and, and their counterparts abroad. That can work where you can have some kind of transfer and technological transfers between them and here. But um, a blanket ban on foreign foreign um, 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 you know, participation in the power sector is a bit difficult and can work. I give you a typical example. Um, a lot of the prepaid meters that you have out there are called smart meters. Mm -hmm. And smart meters are exactly a very sophisticated technology that you just don't have here. So even if you can maybe get some you know, manufacture the components, meter components locally. A lot of the software and you know all the things that you need to have a smart meter, you have to get them from abroad, and probably countries like China, South Africa, and so. So yes, uh, it's it's a good move, but please, you just can't say you want to ban it or you want to stop it. You have a deadline to just push for a technical partnership, which mm -hmm. already exists, and then make sure that it's almost anonymous without saying maybe just in a hypothetical issue uh, of us to say that we'll stop buying the oil uh, from, we just foreign, like from foreign yeah. sources and, and when we have actually annoyed well, we haven't consolidated our own let me, let me <laughs> ask our impact what decision was to make this business because as with all our officials the audience determines what to say yeah exactly yeah so sometimes that might have to answer okay, okay, exactly exactly that's right. anything goes Taj on whatsapp says this Duke's issue just brings to the fore the challenges with the judiciary. We need to speed up cases. And then from Deji, Deji says, guys, uh, three people put up a good showing at the debate. Only Obi decides to support an even bigger cause and coalition rather uh, than a narrow one. And we all seem to have negative remarks. Isn't it mature for her to, when you can take stock of the situation and change direction when a better, no. better path emerges? I think we should applaud her, not berate her, for goodness sake. Uh, well, somebody said he's disappointed after the debate. He was very encouraged and he felt inclined to vote for her. But after he, she dropped out, and he's confused. And that's uh, similar yeah, sentiment with everyone. He says he doesn't want to vote again. Yeah. Please vote. <laughs> 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 Let's move on to the next story. Okay, so the next story comes to you so late. It's uh, from the front newspaper. It says appeal court holds on against trial at CCT. And the details are the Court of Appeal, Abuja Division, has stopped the Court of Conduct Tribunal from proceeding. We're carrying on the charges of false assets declaration filed against the Chief of Justice of Nigeria. That's what's happening here. 
What are your thoughts about this? I mean, the most interesting thing is that this is the uh, this is the chief justice here. So, I mean, I mean, it's federal government against the chief justice. Mm. Um, around the interesting. Anyway, um, <laughs> but okay. So, so the stay of action has been granted. So this this uh, this story just uh, is is sort of you know um, is highlighting the, the background or the inner workings to that. Um, the, 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 court, the, the state of action has been granted, saying that look, um, when, uh, when 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 that when when that is resolved by the court, then the CCT can continue. Uh, but the argument um, from the CCT is that regardless of the uh, the decision of the appeal, that it won't affect the findings of uh, the CCT. In my view, we need to we need to. We're always here, and we're here with different um, officials and the government officials and the official, um, you know, people who represent us and represent the government mm. um, as regards asset integration. People don't just suddenly appear on the scenes, right? So even that, the whole, the, the whole asset declaration process to me is even it's faulty. It's 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 bandage on um, of, on a defective system. Yeah. If we had a proper system where people um, and everything comes together. Um, Clear ownership of property was identified. Okay. People pay tax, but this one is an account, and everything rolls up. Hmm? This is an account matter. This is bank account. Is there anything coming to bank account in case? I mean, we have BVN. Yeah, exactly. You don't know the money you have in your account. Simplest Just thing. call your BVN yeah, and yes, write to all the yes, banks. Please tell me if I have anybody here. You, know, you know, we still have this issue where uh, the BVN coverage is not. Mm. It's not in the Mm. And then there's and, also the other aspect. These, these, yes. are, these, are, these are the kind of. Mm. These are the kind of. Just, just to you know, I mean, balance it out while you know, query some of the areas, simple areas, so to speak. Yeah, there's the other aspect of certain banks under regulation, uh, you know, uh, obliged to report domicile, uh, some certain domiciles or amounts that domiciles them accounts mm. to the superior body, which is CBN. Yeah. So if they notice certain things, but well, we watch and see. Right. Let's move on. <laughs> uh, so this next story is from the Guardian newspaper, and uh, this one here comes to you, Waji. It says court suspends Kalu's alleged 3.2 billion naira fraud trial Ooh. over fiat. And you know what? I just let you walk us through it. Okay, so um, you know, Waji Kalu is just you know, the, the gift that keeps on giving. Mm. Um, it's just always just can't go away. All right, so I just need to understand something. I'm not a lawyer, but I just need to get something. Mm-hmm. So I have to go look at, look what the yeah. word fiat yeah. actually meant because I was reading it up and it doesn't make any sense. So according to some dictionary I found online, it's a legal authoritative decision that has absolute sanction and it's a legally binding command. Okay. So for all the legal powerhouses out there, please let me uh, help me understand something. If a fiat has been issued, why do we need a fresh fiat? Why does that fiat expire in the first place if it is a legal authoritative decision that has absolute sanction? Is it because it goes to the Court of Appeals and the decision is now overturned? So how does that now play on the actual definition of that term? Mm-hmm. You see, this is where you now begin to have situations where people like Rodriguez or Carlo can never actually be faced with criminal charges because of all these loopholes within our legal system that are not absolutely clear. Because what now begins to happen is that if these things are not definitive enough, these his lawyers, who I assume are quite competent and smart, will now play on these loopholes to be able to now suspend situations, etc., cetera, etc., cetera, allow him to travel out the country. He doesn't necessarily have to submit his travel documents and all these particular issues. We're talking about a man that is being accused of a 3.2 billion naira fraud situation. We need to get to the bottom of it so we can understand, so we can have some semblance of legal action on individuals who happen to be in public office so that there can be some sanity in the system. Mm-hmm. But when you have these very, very, very ambiguous legal terms, Things are just going to continue to get kicked down the road. All right, our final story. Uh, this one comes from the Guardian, and it's uh, for you too. It says uh, three Nigerian robotic teams set for international competitions, and uh, well, it's it's quite interesting and also uh, encouraging. But I'd like to know your thoughts. About yeah, this. I mean, okay, so very quickly, it's also refreshing to see that there's still a federal uh, government college in you know as one of the schools who um, the students became finalists. I uh, yeah, expect them to just be private uni um, institutions. Uh, there are three of them, one's a federal and two are two or two others are not. Now it, it's important. Um, it, you need to invest in, in, in STEM, which is science, technology, engineering and mathematics. Uh, because um, and, and every country that's that has a plan for the future yeah. seems to recognize and realize this that um, the future of work is changing, everything is changing as an, as as um, as, as it were. 
and there's a huge focus on uh, developing talent. This is another example that the, the right, even without the right conditions, Nigerians thrive. So why don't we just make the right conditions and see what will happen? Create more opportunities is what you're saying in general. Thank you very much. JC Nova on Twitter says, uh, freshly pressed, interesting law of, around electricity, especially when the news of Tesla coming into Nigeria mm. is making the rounds. Hashtag fear of disruption. As a question, Lagos, we are out of time. Uh, apologies uh, for not being able to go through all the messages that came in on WhatsApp. But thank you very much for tuning in. And special thanks to our analysts at the corporate MC is Waji himself. And of course, uh, Tundio Kofi is at Big Coast on the socials. And Ugo Dre is just by the same name, Ugo Dre. Lagos next, we talk sports inside of the locker room here on Smooth 98.1. Good morning.